everyone, it's Chris. And we're back again with another device on the 3000. This time we're going to convert a hard drive uh, from uh, the original 3245 meg hard drive to a SCSI to SD. Um, I currently also have a Expansion Systems IDE compact flash card with a rear removal. But I really want the SCSI. I want to take all this out and use it in something else that I have another project for. But I wanted to go over how you can set up a SCSI to HD on your Amiga or Atari, a PC, whatever you got, an old Macintosh. Uh, it isn't quite as plug and play as you would think. Um, it's a great device. It's been working fine. But I just wanted to show you from the start how to set one up. So for this instance, I have a 32 gig SanDisk Ultra Plus 80 meg per second uh, card. Um, Okay. Before you so when this. we get our card here, we're going to go ahead and insert it into your PC. And you'll see it shows up as my Canon. And if I go back to my PC, you can see it's a 32 gig card. It's empty, but I need to clean it. So we're going to launch a command prompt. And we're going to type disk part. And then we're going to do list disk. Now I know my layouts of my card reader, but yours may vary. So I'm looking for the 32 gig drive, which is uh, disk five. So we're going to type select disk, whoops, five. And disk five is now selected. And we're just going to type clean. This erases the drive totally of all partitions, making it available to write on whatever you want. So I'm going to put this card in right now. And I'm going to use, excuse my head, a micro USB and plug it in and this is going to go plug into my PC and we're going to switch to my desktop. You're going to hear the Windows sound of a device being added. Alright, so let's get to my desktop here. Now I'm going to run this utility called SCSI to SD Util. What that's going to do, it's going to power the card. Alright, the device has been added. If you're plugging this in the first time, you'll see a Windows device driver four devices by default and a general settings tab, a file, a debug, a window, and a help. I always leave the log so I can see what's going on. You can make it how you like it. You're not going to be in here much. But just so you know, if you do swap compact flash cards for something else, you will have to redo this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's on defaults right now. So we're going to make sure we're at loaded defaults, right? And by default, you only have one SCSI device. These are not enabled. It is and it is defaulted to a 2 gig partition. The reason it defaults to 2 is I think a lot of old computers can't read a lot of data. But I have a 32 gig card in here. So I'm going to turn this to auto. And I want two hard drives. So I'm going to turn this one on too. And you're going to notice, again, it's 2. And it says overlapping data. So we're going to put this on auto so it picks up the last sector. So what we're going to do is go to device 1. And I want a, I'll leave it a 2 gig partition. But I'm going to do this code source vendor. And I'm going to call it 2 gigabyte dev 1. Why? So I know dev1 is 2 gigabytes. And then I'm going to go to device2, and I'm going to enable this one. I'm going to make this one a little larger, like uh, 16 gigabytes. How about that? And we're going to call this one 16 gig dev2, just for my own little uh, thing, so when I'm in HD Toolbox, I can figure out what's going on. And that's it. We're going to choose File, Save to Device. You'll see it flashing the array. On the SCSI to HD device, you can see that it is flashing itself. It has completed, and we're going to quit. And then we're going to unplug the cable and just set that aside. Now, we're pretty much done that part. You'll see I have my 4-pin Berg, my SCSI, and I have a uh, right here a H you can't really see that, an HDMI out to my capture here. This is this is a SCART to DB25 Amiga down the back, and it's just powering itself. Um, all right, so with that, we're going to flip to the HDMI capture and turn the Amiga on. HD Toolbox with a SCSI dot device. That's my Amiga's general one, and we're going to see what we see. I have two SCSI drives. Do you remember I had a ID 0 and an ID 1 because I set them up. So we're going to do change drive type for ID 0. This is my 2 gigger. We're going to say define new and we're just going to read the configuration. Don't worry about any weird negative numbers here. Okay. 
All right. 2 gig, 2 gig dev 1. Remember that? We're just going to say okay. Okay. And we're going to partition that drive. And we're going to delete the second partition. We're going to make this a 2 gig partition. I apologize for any weird flickering or banding. It's just the capture card. We're going to call this DH0, Advanced Options. It is bootable. Uh, file system. Oops, we're going to make sure it's 4620. 4620, that's the 3.1.4.1 file system that this card is booted off of. And we're going to save changes to this drive. Now, we're going to repeat the same thing for the, which will be DH1, or I'll call it DH2, because I have a DH1 mounted over here. So I have work, and now DH2. So we're going to do define new, read the config. Now remember, I had to select the second partition. It's going to yell. It's going to be a negative number here. 4.2. It's 16 gig dev 2. Don't worry about that. Just hit OK. Whoops. <laughs> hit OK. And OK again. Now we're going to partition this drive. And it's going to say a weird number. And update. Okay, 4620. This is going to be called DH2. Okay, we're going to give it some more buffers, I'll tell you that much. We should do the same for the other one. If you have RAM, you can do the buffers. Or DH0. Okay, this is bootable. Advanced options check. You'll notice I don't have direct SCSI transfer in this. Just say okay. I'm going to save changes to drive. And we're going to save changes to drive. Now we're going to exit. And it usually asks you to reboot. So we're going to manually reboot. So you're going to see right here we have workbench and this weird DH2. So we're going to format quick the work disk. And I'm going to call it work. Put out my K. And you know me, I have to take international mode off. We're going to just choose quick format. Two gigs format. And the light is on. It is initializing that partition. And it is completed. And here it is right here. And now we're going to do the same thing for the larger partition and see if it even works. Uh, this is DH2. No international. We're going to do quick format. And you saw, there it is. It was 16 gigs. So we're just going to format 15 gigs. Here's a common problem. Not enough memory available. Whoops, so I can't format this disk. Now, do you know why I can't format this disk? Because there is a weird block size issue with this sucker. And this is gonna just screw up until I restart. And I'm gonna show you what you gotta do. So we're gonna repartition DH2. So here it is here. We're gonna say partition drive. We're going to do advanced options. Hmm. Okay, so we hit change here. And we're going to update this block size here. I'm going to crank this sucker up because I'm going to try 8 first. I'll do 16K. I don't know. We're just going to say okay. Okay. And save. Yep. And close and now we're getting the reboot. Okay, so yeah, there here's DH2. So let's see if we can format this sucker. Let me close this and uh, format this disk. Uncheck international mode, uncheck the stupid trash can, which is useless. Quick format. Okay, do I have enough buffers? Do I have enough? 
Are you sure? Boom, initializing disk and done. Now you'll see we were able to format this 16 gig partition and we can then copy our data over from our DHO all my stuff with a pre-configured workbench to the SCSI 2HD drive and then remove the IDE and boot from it. And this is a 16 gig partition. Now if I wanted to add additionals, now this is busy right now, but if this wasn't doing its thing, I could actually run the SCSI to HD util on my PC again at a third partition. If I wanted to, I just wanted to and have a different device. Uh, please keep in mind that the device IDs are 0 through 4. You can change them. The card itself, I believe, doesn't assign itself a device. Uh, by default, the Amiga uses 7 for its host adapter. Uh, if you have an add-on card, it would depend on that card's manufacturer for what uh, device ID that SCSI card holds. So if you're going to have a CD-ROM or another SCSI peripheral, just make sure that your IDs are different than the ones you're assigning in the SCSI to HD. And that is how you set up a SCSI drive on a SD card and use it in your Amiga. And we are just uh, still copying away and we don't need to wait for this thing to do it. And uh, that's it. So I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. And have a great day.